Hey my geekers, Caitlin here. And for this week's episode, I want to talk all about postpartum emergencies. Over the past week, I had two individuals come in postpartum, one with the chief complaint of fever and the other with the chief complaint of shortness of breath. So I thought it was a good idea to review some of the postpartum emergencies we should be familiar with in the emergency department. So let's get started. So there are two main causes of shortness of breath in the postpartum period, and one of them is postpartum cardiomyopathy, and the other is preeclampsia and eclampsia. So my patient came in, satting in the 80s on room air, uh, tripoding, and obvious respiratory distress. I immediately asked her if she had any history of congestive heart failure or any lung disease, or if she had any DVT-like symptoms or any other um, risk factors for pulmonary embolism, which she all denied. Um, I immediately ordered a chest x-ray, which later came back as moderate pulmonary edema. On exam, she had bilateral crackles throughout uh, her lung fields. And after I saw the chest x-ray, I just immediately ordered a 60 of Lasix and put her on a non-rebreather mask. And she was a little better after an hour, um, but she definitely needed to be admitted and the ICU actually took her. And she ended up having uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy. So um, that's one of them. The other main cause of shortness of breath in the postpartum period is preeclampsia or eclampsia. And this can be diagnosed up to four weeks after the mother delivers their baby. So, and this is a blood pressure greater than 140 over 90. So it's really not that much of an elevation in blood pressure. Um, she will have edema and that includes pulmonary edema and these patients can have flash pulmonary edema and come in with respiratory distress and proteinuria. So um, always make sure you get a urine on these patients and never forget about HELP syndrome and that stands for hemolysis um, of the red blood cells. So grab an LDH on these patients. Um, elevated liver enzymes so make sure you get a CMP or hepatic function panel and then low platelets and with HELP syndrome, these patients can have right upper quadrant pain as well. My other patient came in with a chief complaint of fever, and I actually saw her, she was walking back, and she was holding her pelvic area in obvious pain. And one thing you wanna be careful of with a postpartum patient with fever is endometritis, especially if they had a C-section. Uh, so this is just infection of the uterine wall. And, um, Another thing or another symptom these patients will have is a lot of foul smelling lochia or a lot of foul smelling uh, discharge. My patient did not and in some cases of group B strep, um, they will not have a lot of discharge. And another thing you'll see is an elevation of white blood cells. Um, so that is one cause of pelvic pain in the postpartum period. Another cause of pelvic pain in the postpartum period is postpartum hemorrhage. And the four T's are usually described um, as the common causes of this. And the first T is tone for uterine adenine. So this is uh, the most common cause of postpartum hemorrhage. And this is when the, the uterus is just not contracting enough and too much bleeding occurs. And this usually happens in the first 24 hours and it's recognized on the labor and delivery floor and they're giving oxytocin and these patients usually do fine. So they usually don't present to the emergency department. Um, another one is thrombin. So if a patient has um, any coagulation factor disorders like um, liver disorders, these patients just might be bleeding longer. Um, and then another one is trauma, so any type of lacerations in the vagina wall during delivery. And this is also usually detected on the labor and delivery floor. And then the last one, um, which usually presents to the emergency department, is products of conception. So this is tissue, um, tissue that is retained in the uterus. Um, so if the placenta does not come out in full during delivery. These patients will have increased bleeding and pelvic pain. Uh, their cervical os may be open, and sometimes these patients present to the emergency department. The last two things you might see in a postpartum patient in the emergency department is the chief complaint of breast pain and headache. Um, not true emergencies unless there's some sort of subarachno bleed in the headache or the patient has mastitis with a concomitant abscess and they've become septic from it. 
Um, but these patients usually present to the emergency department. Um, if in mastitis, they might have um, a concomitant abscess. Um, in that case, you would want to do incision drainage and put them on antibiotics and not continue breastfeeding. But if there is no abscess, make sure these patients continue breastfeeding and put them on a breastfeeding um, antibiotic that they can use during that time. Um, and headaches, the most common cause of headache postpartum is a tinge type headache. And the next one is a migraine. And then some patients might have a post-puncture LP headache from the epidural that they received, and these patients really benefit from IV caffeine. Thank you.